Greetings and welcome to the DataBits channel. Today we're going to talk about record players. You see on your screen right now five different unusual record players that all have the same thing in common. They are essentially podcast players before podcasts were even a thing. What's unusual is that these record players have no turntable that the record sits on and spins. In fact, these all have stationary records and a spinning stylus. So we'll take a look at these and hear the amazing sound quality. All of these units have a story to tell, whether it's about birds or the Berenstain Bears or Mother Goose or even your favorite baseball player. I also have one other device that is not pictured here that has a story to tell and it has no batteries and yet is a record player. So we'll see that here momentarily. But first, let's take a look at these individually and hear how they sound. Our record player journey begins in 1977 when Microsonics, the company, introduced this player along with these cards from the Audubon Society. Each one of these cards is about a bird and on the back of the card is a description of the bird and on the record that you see embedded there on plastic stuck to the back of the card contains a bird call or the, this particular bird sounds along with a narrator telling you about this bird. In this case, cardinals, which I'm from St. Louis, so cardinals are a pretty big deal for us. But in any case, I've probably got some of those in my backyard right now. But also, there is a relationship between this Microsonics company and the Seattle Supersonics basketball team, which apparently produced some kind of a player like this, along with cards with basketball players and basketball coaches on them. Now, this particular one I cut down because I wanted to try and play it on a different player other than this one, which I'll show you shortly, but just wanted to show you one of the cards that I absolutely paid way too much for just so you know. Okay, how do you play your bird sounds? Well, first you pick up the player, which has a play stop button right here. This button here you push in order to load the card into the player and on the player itself is a little pin and that button on the side makes this pin move up and down. That releases the card from the player. Let's go ahead and play the one that introduces the format. And it's not that one. Let's try this one. Okay, so this is an introductory card. I'm going to put it into the player here and I have to push this pin down. See, it stops on the pin if I don't. And then I let go and there it is locked into place. Now I can hold it like this and play it if I'd like, or I can lay it down onto the table like this and play it. And that's the way I'll do it. So I can get the microphone close to the player. Society's Audible Audubon. Here's an idea for listening to the bird sounds. When you play a bird card, you will hear the bird song or call, followed by hints for recognizing the bird in the field and memorizing its sounds. Then the song or call is repeated. Having the commentary in the middle exploits a feature of the microphonograph. When you stop the player, the stylus automatically returns to the record's beginning. If you wish, you may listen to a bird sound almost continuously without repeating the narration. Just stop the unit before the narration begins, then start it again. You can repeat the record as often as you wish without the narration being heard. This is also a good way to make a game of memorizing the bird sounds. You or a friend try to guess the name of the bird from the sound alone. Then use the narration to tell if you are correct. We hope you enjoy Audible Audubon. Okay, in this case, this thing does not auto return until you hit stop. I'm going to eject the card and let's put in one that actually has a bird song on it. Okay. And away we go. The Cardinal is a brilliant red bird with a red crest which offers a series of bright sounding whistles. Watch here, watch here, birdie, 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 wheat, wheat, wheat. Watch for variations of these in different sections of the country. 
Apparently, different sets or series of cards were recorded at different speeds. So, for example, I've inserted this card in here. Remember, it was, in fact, big, but I've cut it down. This one plays too fast if I play it on this player. Yeah, I played in this town of Bern, you know, Indiana. I played high school ball, and then I uh, played basketball. I ended up uh, over in Germany, and then I played uh, army ball over there. I played in college at Wheaton College in Illinois. I went to school there. I coached him, right? Okay, so you can see the disc uh, stylus. You can see the stylus spinning here. I'll show it to you. As the needle is quickly wore down on the back side of this piece of acrylic plastic on here. All right, so that is the Microsonics Audubon player. And I want to send a shout out to Dan O'Connor because I saw this on his channel as I was researching the rest of these particular items. And his player is slightly different, so if you'd like to see his player, you can follow the link that's in the description. Our next stop in our journey is in 1978. This particular machine was introduced by Fisher Price and was designed for children, and they could use this as a reader for their books, okay? So you open up your book, and inside the book are little records. And they're actually round, like uh, normal records are. So what you would do is take the player, which has this pin right here, this large centering pin, and you put it into the center of the record, and it kind of drops in as you find its spot there. And of course, you've got some dashes on there to help you center it. And then you just hit the play button. And that is the Fisher Price Talk to Me Player and Talk to Me Book. Our next stop is in 1979, which is when this player came out. So again, as I was researching these particular products and looking around online, I ran across this thing. This thing is flat out cool looking, and it doesn't look like a toy. It has a volume control here, a pause control, a headphone jack, a pause and stop eject button here. Here's where your AA batteries go. It's got a place to put a, a DC adapter right there. Got your speaker. And again, a very sophisticated looking spinning record tone arm there. Now this one, I don't know which cards were designed for this one. I could not find any information regarding that online. But just to show you the size, it's right about the size of a micro cassette recorder and player. So what I did, and you'll see it in our next series, in this the, uh, the Comes to Life books, I cut out some of the records from that book. Again, you'll see it shortly. So that I could play them in this player, and I even took one of the Audubon records and cut it down so that it fits in here as well. So let's go ahead and put a card into the player. This one, again, is a little more sophisticated. When you press the card in, it clicks into place, and then it's supposed to hold it, but it doesn't always happen. Where's my little release thing here? Okay, there we go. All right, now this one's not as loud as the other players. I don't know if it needs caps or what exactly is going on here, but let's take a look at one of the storybook records and then we'll play this one again that we saw a minute ago and then we'll see how one of the Audubon records plays in this machine. Long, long ago in a faraway land a young king and his lovely queen were riding through the forest and they came to a pond to stop to take a drink. The queen 
looked around. It is so beautiful here. It seems magical. And we are so happy together. There's only one thing missing. I wish we had a child. As the queen bent over to drink, a little green frog came out of the pond. It hopped up on the queen's hand. My lady, your wish shall be granted. You shall have a baby daughter, and she will bring you great happiness. Now this particular unit has auto shut off, and this particular story card stops at the exact moment. It's timed perfectly for this particular player. Let's take a look at the uh, the bird one. Now you'll notice the narrator's pitch is just a little bit lower. how that one works. Now I'm going to hit eject. That moves the pin out of the way. You can see the pins right there. All right, now let's try our uh, basketball coach here, I believe. Yeah, he's a, he was an assistant coach. Now this one, okay, now I remember what happened. This one I didn't cut long enough. So what I need to do is get it to click, and then I'm just barely going to push down on the eject so I can get that out of there. And I'm going to put this guy in there. I think that'll work. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I played in this town of Bern, you know, Indiana. I played high school ball, and then I uh, played after the war ended uh, over in Germany. And then I played uh, army ball over there and played in college at Wheaton College in Illinois. I went to school there. I coached the American Legion team that, we, that I played on in Indiana when I got out of the army. And then we also had a family basketball team. Five of us played on a family team. We kind of toured around the state of Indiana, and I kind of usurped the you know, the, the role there and became the coach of that team. And so there was an interest there and uh, some fair success. It was something that was fun. When I graduated from uh, Wheaton, I got a uh, chance to go to a little school in Minneapolis, Northwestern College, that said, if you'll come and be our assistant coach, we'll pay your way through graduate school. So I said, hey. So that's how I started my coaching. I had to uh, coach at Seattle Pacific with players that were perhaps... Uh, had less ability than a lot of the teams that we played against. So therefore, I had to really study the game, figure out ways to maneuver my players on the floor and take advantage of some of the other team's weaknesses because I didn't have that many strengths. I got an experience there, and I think I brought that into my coaching with the Sonics and it, because I had... Okay, so see, he went a little bit long for this particular player's auto-shut-off feature, so he gets cut off. But again, I don't know what cards were supposed to be paired with this particular player. Again, I've made some here and I've cut some out, but I don't know what uh, was designed to be played in this. So if you guys know, or if you find a link to some on eBay or somewhere, let me know. I'll be happy to put an update in the description as to what this guy was for. But again, it's a Microsonics player. This was brand new when I found it. In fact, at the time that I'm making this video, you might find another one on eBay. I think the guy had three and two were sold at the moment that I bought mine. So that's again the Microsonics and this is a model MS501. MS501. And our next stop takes us to 1989 and this particular player is called a Sports Talk player. I don't believe it has any relationship to the Microsonics players but this particular player uses the same technology. The player itself is pretty simple it has a cover on the bottom that you can open up and put a couple of cards in. Then here's where your batteries are. You've got a volume control right here that you would use a, a flathead screwdriver to, to move up and down. Now all of these players required a tad bit of restoration. Mainly a new belt was required on all of them. This one you press the eject button forward and then this glass door opens and then you remove the card carefully and then you'll see the record is on the back of the card okay 
see the theme here Cardinals let's go ahead and throw in the demo disk here this is the series one checklist and this will kind of give you an idea it's like a commercial for this whole range of products and by the way there's a gazillion of these on eBay you could go right now and pick you one up I even found new ones still in the box cards for these galore so if this is interesting to you go pick one out and have some fun all right so we're going to hit the play button which is on the side here once our card is in place the door is closed and off we go hello i'm don drysdale and i'm joe torrey welcome to the world of baseball talk in baseball talk you'll meet the best players in the game 122 of your favorite players and managers are included in the first series. You'll hear from George Brett on the infamous Pine Tar home run. I walked back to the dugout, everybody shaking my hand, and then they quit shaking my hand when the umpire laid the bat down on the plate. And I just got through telling my teammates, if they, if they say I have too much Pine Tar in the bat, I'll kill them. As soon as I said those words, the umpire comes over and says, you're out. <laughs> Jack Morris on what it feels like to win a World Series. Every kid dreams about, uh, you know, when they play baseball as a little leaguer, they put themselves in that position. Two outs, bottom of the ninth inning, 3-2 uh, count, and there it goes, or, uh, you know, pop fly, you know, and somebody's got to win, and you just always envision yourself being on the winning team. And Mike Flanagan on getting a new glove from Japan. I didn't really realize how much of a, of a joke until the Japanese people came in at the end of the season into the World Series, and they said, Mr. Flanagan, we're very glad you use our glove. Along with today's stars, Series 1 includes 32 of the game's all-time greats. Superstars like Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Tom Seaver, Reggie Jackson, and Don Drysdale. In addition to interviews, these cards contain actual radio calls of their greatest moments. I cut it off there because some of those old radio calls, like from the 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, they just sound awful on this thing. I'm not even sure why they included them. Uh, can barely understand them but that gives you an idea of how this system works and again it's very much the same thing he's got a got a spinning stylus here spins around hear a little bit of the, of the sound when I rub my finger across the stylus now strangely this one is most like the talk to me player but it will not play the talk to me player discs. If I put one in the middle here, just kind of hold it with my finger. This one I cut out of one of the books. Such a savage, right? So needless to say, uh, the Talk To Me player plays a little bit faster, uh, much much faster speed than this particular one. They probably slowed it down so they could get longer recording times on those records. So again, this is the Sports Talk player available at an eBay location or antique mall near you. Again, this one needed a new belt, and the belt it required is, uh, is, a, is a thin belt, not a round belt, but a, I guess more like a ribbon type belt, flat belt. Our time machine makes its next stop in 1993 when a company called Yes, Y-E-S, exclamation mark, introduced the Comes to Life books. Kind of a revamp of the same technology we've already seen. Here's the player. There was another player just similar, except for this part in the outside was round instead of square, but looked almost exactly the same. It's got a button right here that tells it whether or not it's sitting on the book, so it will turn the unit off got your battery cover here with a screw on it got your pin right there your start and play stop and play and then you've got a volume control here and then if you put a screwdriver in that hole right there you can adjust the speed all right you know the drill open up the book place the player on the book you've got uh, an arrow to show you where it goes as well as a pin and then we hit play Three little bears liked more than a mystery. It was 
And that's our comes to life book system. Got a ton of books for these. They're easy to find when you go to Goodwill because they have this binder thing going on here, ring binder. So just look for the ring binder in the children's books and sometimes you'll see these pop off the shelf. Here I have Cinderella and the Berenstain Bears Mysterious Numbers. Our time machine is going to take us back a little bit to 1982. And the reason is because these particular books that you're looking at here are talking books, but they're very different from what we've seen thus far. You're going to like this. This is really, really unusual. I've never seen anything like this. Actually, I did see something like this when I was a kid, and I remembered it and did quite a bit of searching before I found one, and then I found two. But uh, this is, if you want to search for it, it's Dial a Story. So it's a Dial a Story talking book. It talks, and these books, take one, these are in their original package. All right, these were like new old stock. So look how thick this thing is. All right, now this is just plastic here, and the book itself is on the inside here on the left. So there's our story that we're going to read. And the player is completely manual. There is no batteries. There's no audio electronics in here. It is completely analog. It's completely acoustic. Okay, so if you guys have ever seen the close and play phonograph, I'm pretty sure that's what the guts of this unit is going to be like. So there's a stylus inside of here with a turntable and a plastic diaphragm that's taking up this area right here. Now when it arrived, it had a pin in here that I had to remove and get beyond this sticker right here in order to play the record. To restart the story, you simply hold the book upright and press this button right here and the stylus via gravity will fall back down to the start of the story once more. So let me demonstrate. It takes a very steady hand, very much like playing the operation game. And the sound quality is surprisingly good for what it is. Here's a little instruction manual inside there. So this time we're going to read Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This is absolutely hideous illustrations. Look at those bears. Those things look evil. Ugh. All right, that's not what's the point. That's not what's cool. What's cool is this part right here. Oh, let's start it over again. We can go faster. We can also go backwards. Isn't that cool? We can also do some scratching. So if you enjoy that scratching sound you hear on some rap songs, we can do it right here. Okay, isn't that cool? So you can, all the fun that's right here. No batteries required. This one, I don't know why, but it doesn't play as well. It skips a bit compared to the other one. So let's listen to our other book, the What Time Is It book. By the way, here's what the back of these look like, in case you're interested in seeing it. Apparently, there are all kinds of stories. Mother Goose favorites, Bozo the Clown, What Time Is It, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Children love them. They see and hear what they are reading. A fascinating and entertaining treat. Make learning fun. Child dials the sonic wheel to hear the story. All right. Let's dial the sonic wheel on the What Time Is It book. And let's learn how to tell time, shall we? Well, let's do it from the beginning. All right. Here we go. The little hand of the clock is at seven. The big hand is at twelve. What time is it? Why, it's seven o'clock. Time to get up. David and 
Debbie stretch and stretch. Now the little hand is between seven and eight. The big hand is at six. What time is it? It's half past seven. Time for breakfast. David and Debbie have pancakes and syrup for breakfast. Spot has a saucer of cream. And Pete the puppy has a nice dog biscuit. Turn to page three. The little hand is at eight. The big hand is at twelve. What time is it? It's eight o'clock. Time for Daddy to leave for the office. Pete the puppy chases Daddy. Go home, Pete, says Daddy. The little hand is at nine. The big hand is at twelve. What time is it? Is <laughs> it now, supposedly, when you play these books backwards, there are hidden secret messages on them. They called that backward masking, but little kids weren't supposed to hear them. It was only adults in the room that could pick them up and, uh, and encode or decode those secret messages. This will conclude our video about these amazing spinning stylus record players from the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like, you could follow me on Facebook as well as Twitter. You could be a Patreon patron if you'd like. All of those links are in the video description below. Please like, share, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about these particular units, or maybe you have memories of having one of these as a kid or have some experience with them. I'd enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.